how does self-isolation actually help our health service? Well, imagine you're playing tag. This person here, represented by a dog kibble, is on it. And when they come in and they tag someone, now instead of actually passing that tag on, both of them are it. And so now both of these can go and run around and tag anyone they like. So they can both go and tag someone. And now all four of these can go and tag someone. And soon you can see that there's a lot of people it and not so many people not it. And now if we mix them all together, you don't know who's it and who's not. But if these groups self-isolate, so they take themselves away and they don't see each other, and maybe there's a group that's bigger, or maybe they do still keep socially interacting, then this whole group are likely to get the virus because they're still interacting and there's probably someone with the virus in it. But this group over here probably won't. And the rate that it transmits from this group and then someone may come from over here to this group, but it slows it down. Now, if you can imagine our health service has only got so much capacity. So say we only had enough capacity for this group. Well, if this group all go in at once, OK, we're OK. But then if suddenly this group comes in as well, well, there's a group of people who won't have the health care that they need. But if we've managed to slow it down so that some of these people have actually recovered before the next group come in, then we've got the capacity to deal with everyone. And so that's why self-isolation, it slows down the spread. And so still the same number of people will probably get the virus, but we spread it out over time, giving the health service chance to actually cope.